First, the money question, inverted yield curve, is it impending slowdown or is this time different? Well, we have a slowdown already, a pretty significant one, and I think what, what the yield curve and, and interest rates generally tell us now is that the risks of a recession down the line in 2020 are more elevated than they have been in this entire cycle. So from a risk perspective, a clear signal, the slowdown is already here. The question is, does it lead to something worse? Right, does it? So let me first of all bring you to my chart, which is, you know, the money chart. We've been showing it for months, but suddenly yesterday kind of took hold. We brought it back to the 1960s, and you can see that every time that there has been an inversion, the recession odds have, you know, increased. Yeah. Are we in recession worry territory? I think we are. Uh, I would say some of what you're seeing is, is warranted by fundamentals. Again, we have a slowdown. The risk of a recession is there. Some of it, though, is also just the politics. Uh, you know, we have governmental policies in many places, in many countries across the world, including in the United States, that give rise to great worries, uncertainty, question the regime that we've been in, the world order in many ways. And so we see flight to safety as a, as a precautionary measure. But c could that lead almost directly to a recession? Right. So, so there's one thing. If the trade war you know, gets dealt with, do we go back to normal? Do we go back to the economic cycle? Or do chief executives essentially still stop investing? You know, confidence works with a lag, and I think, unfortunately, a lot of damage has been done already. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't correct some of it, but I do think uh, populist policies across the world are, cannot lead to prosperity. And so what we have today is confidence is being undermined. You see it in investment spending. This is starting to hit the economy as a whole, and it's starting to reflect itself uh, in markets. We also have the particular issue that if there were to be a recession, uh, it's not clear at all what the policy response would be. You know, the, the, the problem of being out of ammunition, uh, I think, adds an additional concern to markets uh, and is an additional explanation why we're seeing these extreme movements in the yield curve and in interest rates generally. Um, the BlackRock, BlackRock Investment Institute has a wonderful paper out uh, called, you know, dealing with the next downturn from unconventional, mo unconventional monetary policy to unprecedented policy coordination. Now, uh, one of the authors is also Stanley Fisher, uh, a former Fed. Again, does the inverted yield curve have an impact on central banks? And do markets worry about the central bank's inability to deal with it? Or does it spur politicians to spend money? Well, I think the, the, the point of the paper here is that more of the same in terms of monetary policy is unlikely to be an appropriate response if we get into a, a recession or a sharp slowdown. So the question is what comes next? And I think that what we're facing is there's no framework at the moment. It is not at all clear what central banks would do, particularly those that are already at the, at the zero lower bound. Uh, to deal with a situation like this. So what we're proposing is the next step has to be something else than just more of the same, something that goes into the direction of essentially what we call go and direct, which would be ways of putting money into, into pockets of consumers or corporates directly in order to spend. So to go around the interest rate channel as opposed to traditional central banking where you really only uh, or always work through the interest rate channel. So kind of like helicopter money, does well, it have to be coordinated? I think what, what it means, helicopter money is a sort of catchphrase from a famous paper that Ben Bernanke gave in, in the early 2000s, but the point is, yes, you have to go in a different way than working through the interest rate channel because interest rates are already so low. And what it means inevitably, and the paper goes into this, is that you will see much closer coordination between fiscal and monetary policy as a, as a critical element of such a next policy regime.